Hey family, we're gonna get started. I'm just gonna give you a pretty view to look at. Hey family, I'm just gonna give you a little view as we get out of the out of the buzz of the going down to the river lake rather. Isn't it beautiful? It's rainy, it's, it's still rainy here, but it's beautiful. So we're just gonna have a little fireside chat as I navigate navigate down this hill. Isn't this pretty? Look at that. And usually there's some turtles that sit right over here. Isn't that pretty? See that? So it's still a little rain falling. I've already seen uh, some snakes are up today, so who knows? what we'll see isn't that beautiful so I'm going to scan this tree just to make sure there's nothing else up there you know I always check the trees for when I'm out here having my moment in nature <laughs> oh my goodness Hey beauties. <laughs> let me see. Let me get the sun. Let me see. Let me see. Is that better? <laughs> hey everybody. Lottie Dottie and everybody. How y'all doing? I don't have uh, my glasses so you will see me straining to see the comments but I'm excited to talk to you. Listen, I should start off this broadcast with you know, we just can't make this magic up. We just can't make this magic up. I had such an amazing time in at home during my birthday week. I could not have planned anything better. Um, I've already shared a little bit in Rebirth Sunday about the week in terms of finding a cousin and, well, a cousin finding us and uh, sharing some really good news with my mother that made her cry like a baby, which made my heart happy. It was, um, whew, it's a, it's, it's, it feels good when you're, when you're, um, when your family is, is excited for you, especially about work you've been doing. So, um, just checking something here. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you all a little bit today, share with you all, hopefully, you can share with me as well um, that this won't be just a one-way conversation <laughs> that we can you know go higher in our conversation today because um, I could take up the whole live sharing with you um, the magic that I just can't make up because my heart is still super full there's been so much healing taking place from the ancestral work 
that sometimes we don't believe, we've been taught not to believe. And the, one of the reasons why I thought it was important to talk about the this now is because it constantly comes up. And um, when you talk about doing ancestral work, the same is true. Um, can you all see me okay? Can you see me okay? Can y'all see me okay? Okay. So last week, we, you know, I jumped in on the way, on the road to surprise my mom and, and all of that good stuff. And um, I got surprised with a whole cousin. I, find, I saw a picture of my mother's grandmother, who she's named after, and all of that good stuff. And so um, I would say that my ancestors are very happy at this time. So listen, let's jump right into it. A lot of times when we start talking about magic, particularly sex magic, but any kind of magic in particular, a lot of people are oftentimes very afraid even of the word magic. Did you know that? This may not be true for many of you who have been bold enough to become whole and bold. That's my new term, whole and bold, honey. And so those of you who have, have been on this journey to be whole and bold in your womanhood and in your relationships and in your family, um, th this, this may not apply so much to you because you may have overcome it. In fact, you may be so far away from the fear that you forgot about the times that other people really are afraid of the word magic. A lot of times it is our religious context. And so when we talk about quickies, particularly for women, we're going to get into the, to the quickies a little bit more because we're going to have some fun with our sex magic um, session that we're going to have. Hey, love, thank you for joining. Um, but when we talk about sex, anything regarding sex, there are still women who are coming onto this broadcast, into this group, who are still, you know, reluctant to say th anything, um, hesitant to really go into their sexual desires and fantasies. And certainly some women are absolutely ashamed of the fact that they may not be fully orgasmic or able to be fully available to um, their spouse, their partner, or to any type of adventure outside of traditional um uh, coupling and sharing and intimacy and a lot of times many of us have not healed the relationship that we have with sin consciousness somebody put sin consciousness in the comments you would be surprised at how sin consciousness will provide will be a mental block to how much you are able to connect and not only you but it can also be a factor in the man or spouse that you choose. And I, I, even though I know that there are some same-sex loving sisters in here, I specifically mention men because, because men go to strip clubs, because men sometimes are known to be whorish um, or, or, or more free, they're, they're not. They just choose who they're going to do do that with and a lot of times the sin consciousness is there and how it shows up is you 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 ask a man like a, you you know how when you're dating and a man might ask you how many how many men have you been with or something like that and you're reluctant to tell him and just in case you're not uh, reluctant and you're free you have no shame about that even though I don't think anybody should know your body count it's none of your business nobody's business to know your body count Especially if you're not passing on an STI or STD. So, um, that being said, um, there's when when um, if a man finds out, for instance, that you've been with a lot of men or something like that, something in him shifts. Now, for many men, they navigate this conflict, but it's oftentimes because the conflict was born in us. We have dual messages when it comes to um, men and women and sexuality. And some of us still hold the, du the dual messaging in terms of sexuality. Um, and that, sisters, let me tell you, that affects how you are able to fully open your heart. 
Now, let me say this to you. Some of you are not hiding just because you're married or just because you got somebody does not mean that your heart is fully open. Sometimes some of you will tell the truth and shame the devil, the imaginary devil, um, that you um, had made some decisions in security. Some of you, and, I, and literally in security, but look at that word, insecure. <laughs> many, many of us make decisions uh, around security from insecurity. And so just because you're married or just because you were married does not necessarily mean that you were, you were liberated in your sexuality. So what happens when you've gone to church all your life and you followed all of the rules and now you are in an intimate relationship and all of a sudden you can't fully relate? You can't fully open up. Your, your beloved wants to do something a little freaky with you, a little tricky with you, or, you know... If you still are running on the program that sex is for uh, your man or for your partner um, and not for you, then you will also use sex as a weapon. How many of you wives have used sex as a weapon, meaning you withhold it as a form of punishment and control when you might be horny as all get out? But you do not absolute open yourself up to be able to have sex because you program yourself to believe that it's for him. And if you ever came into a relationship and you did not clear up your sexual defense deficiencies in, in, in your sexual, your deficient belief system, they follow you in your relationship. They follow him too, but it's the woman who abs who sets men free. How many of you mothers have talked to your boys m about more than just not getting a woman pregnant? Do, how many of you have talked to um, a, um, uh, your sons about how to please a woman? Okay, yeah. So I I'll move. <laughs> um, how to please a woman? Um, literally based off of her anatomy. How many of you have done that? And you know why many women cannot answer that they've done this? It's because oftentimes we don't fully know our anatomy. We're not fully in touch with our own anatomy. And, and if we don't have those basics in our anatomy, oftentimes when we jump to do to do so-called sex magic, it's premature. Because if you have not, if you don't know how you are built, what you are built for, and I am not just talking about this knob does this thing. <laughs> I'm not just talking about that. But, but manual stimulation is a part of that. And so when we talk about sex is sin, I want you all to put in some of the comments, some of the things that because I am I'm one of the ones who is who has been a little bit removed from a lot of the messaging so it helps me a lot of times when I'm coaching counseling um, or or in conversations with you all to be reminded that th that there are, is a majority out there who still are in fear shame and guilt around sexuality I cannot tell you how many um, toy parties I've gone to and honey, it end, ends up being a healing and deliverance service, a fun one though, <laughs> a fun healing and deliverance service because there are, there are so many professional, beautiful, accomplished women who are frigid and rigid around their sexuality. So check this out. What are some of the things that you know you've had to overcome? We may have talked about this before on another broadcast, but um, it's, it's worth talking about specifically because when we start talking about sex as sin, um, the first thing that comes up is masturbation. And that's why many women are like, I need a husband. I need a husband. Because the truth is you want a handyman. You want a driver. You want somebody to take care of your car. But you also want somebody to be responsible for your sexual health. And so when you are sexually frustrated and you need to relieve the relief of sexuality, you don't even know how to give yourself a quickie because manual stimulation is not something that typically someone teaches you. But certainly as a mother, an auntie, a mentor, we can encourage our girls to learn how 
to be able to please themselves so that they won't be so wide open when they get into the company of the chemistry of, uh, of another. How many of you can rock with that? What's some of the other ones? Because that whole idea that masturbation is sinful, how many of you have replaced what it is that you have believed and not just moved on and talk about you free? I'm free. Honey, I'm free now. <laughs> I'm free. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting off. I know I'm, I'm, mo I'm mocking you a little bit. But I, it trips me out sometimes how quickly, and, and to a degree, there is some freedom when we're willing to go against the grain and just go out and experiment and challenge some things. And I'm telling you, listen, how, I can't tell you how many women, um, b before I start talking about sensuality and sexuality, particularly in, uh, amongst my Christian friends, nobody was really talking about this openly like that. Nobody was really uh, willing to do it. And so a few people sat in sessions and now everybody want to go and say they want to teach on sensuality and sexuality, um, sometimes in their churches, sometimes in their conferences. And, 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 and that's okay to a degree because many of us give when a woman gets free, she gives permission to another woman to be free herself. However, I offer caution in that because there's le levels to this shit. Yeah, yeah, like Meek Mills, the one who just got out of jail said levels to this, yeah, levels to this, levels to this, levels to this, levels to this. And listen, when I first got into my studies, when I first got into the, my studies, <coughs> I'm not going to lie. I was chasing orgasm and I was, I wanted to know how I can do this and do that and, and all of that stuff and only to find that my personal development was necessary just in order for me to open up to the desires of my sexuality and such and to be able to expand those desires. So let me see you all are putting comments in here. Um, Monique says, I can rock with it. I just uh, haven't had the conversation with my daughter yet. Oh, my gosh. Yo, you got to have the conversation. See, the conversation gets to be ongoing. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I grew up around a mother. The, and, and, and it's no wonder I'm teaching what I'm teaching. I grew up around a, a, a family of matriarchs who I didn't know. We didn't have a term for sexually free, liberated diva all of that stuff all I know is I grew up around women who were beautiful I mean beautiful Tina Turner legs beautiful tall women in that in down south they were light-skinned my mother's much lighter well she's gotten darker over the years but much light you know that light skin stuff matters in some places down south <clears throat> and um but one of the things my mother just used to always talk about sexuality so openly and so free when the parties and get together, there was adult conversation. And yes, we had to leave the room, but guess what? We, we snuck in and sometimes when we, as we started getting older, the conversations would get richer and deeper. And so my, one, my mother used to tease men, you know, some of the men in the family. And she used to say to the men, baby, let me tell you something about a woman. You can run out here in these streets all you want to. But you remember this when you get old. We can look up longer than you can look down. Now somebody got, got to get that. <laughs> somebody got to get that. She said, we can look up longer than you can look down. She was talking about the stamina of a woman and the ability of a woman to stay in her sexual prowess long, well past a man. So a man, a lot of times, who's been out here running the streets, by the time some of them settle down, they, they have no ability to hold an orgasm. Let me tell you, we need to be able to talk about uh, 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 sexuality quickies, um, stamina and that type of thing because some of you who are approaching 50 um, and, and approaching 60 um, you know impotency is a real thing and impotency is happening in a lot of men earlier now because um, so because of the use of Viagra and so the, you have some, some 20 year old men and 30 year old men who are greedy 
who are using the little blue pill and, and Cialis and all this stuff and ruining their blood vessels. And so by the time they get to you, so now you in a relationship, you ready to get married and you, if you operating off of this thing, you know, I can't try it before I buy it and you not satisfied sexually. And, and, and I can't, um, I can't speak for, for, you know, about anyone specifically, but there are many women who are not sexually satisfied. And I will tell you, Dr. Christian Northrup, she might not write about it in her, her book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, as much. But I have had the opportunity to sit with her, study with her. And one of the things that she talks about is how women who are not sexually satisfied they it creates illness in the body that's number one the second thing is when you're having sex out of obligation and against your will it can also contribute to the mind and body connection of yeast infections uh uh, uh utis um um and sometimes irreg uh unnatural discharges because you don't have any authority over your womb. Okay, so let me keep, let me keep going. Nina says, I can rock with it. It does give you perspective when you are in the presence of a man and sexual desire is already satisfied. Doesn't it, girl? Because when you are already satisfied, you're able to sit in your seat of power in a different way. I, I know one one um, sister, one of, another one of my teachers, said that when she was, she said when she feels that rush, she said she tells her partner, "Honey, I'm getting ready to go have sex. Would you like to join me?" <laughs> In other words, she's getting ready to go engage herself, and she's sharing it with her partner. Okay. All right. So Monique says easing into it she's still super modest and might be embarrassed by the idea of it well just because you say might be i know that you that's your stuff because you don't know until you try and you are the t mama sets the tone of whether somebody is embarrassed and all of that listen i thought my nephew was embarrassed first of all my mother was the first one who brought up the conversation about putting a condom on and so my mama just just broke right into boy. Let me tell you something, boy. You better know how to use that thing. That's how she talks, right? <laughs> and so, wait a minute. Let me make sure ain't nothing crawling on me, y'all. Okay. I'm do that crawling thing. So um, so so then, so I'm we're doing it. And so Victor would you know. Oops, I said his name. But anyway, my nephew, no secret. He he grown now. He would, you know, he'll tell you about it. But anyway, he would just be like, oh, my God. You know, like he was embarrassed. Oh, my God. And then when my sister would go to bed at night and my, and my, and my, um, my mom would go to bed and I'm still up, he'd come up to me and he'd say, Nene. That's what he calls me. That's what my niece and nephew call me, Nene. Nene, what was that thing you was talking about? I want to know more about this. I said, really? I said, okay. So I poll him to see if he really, really want you really want to have this conversation? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna be direct with you. <laughs> and um man, I remember having those conversations with him and they were the best. I felt like such a good, a proud auntie. And guess what? When just between me, me and you and the, the however many yous listen to this, he would have a fit if I said this part. But let's just say that when he got ready, he was of age, and but he, you know, he went to college and stuff. When he needed like a, a super supply of condoms and stuff, he asked me. So anyway, I we you know children. I guess I could I could do a whole broadcast and a whole session talking about our children and and how we try to be perfect because a lot of that still comes from that sexist sin you're getting liberated but your children are still in bondage because many of you get liberated and then you don't go back and tell your children honey i was in error i didn't know what i know now i learned it this way i want you to know that there's another way for you to look at it and then let them make their own decision 
Many of us don't trust the God in our children. And so we, we operate on rules, we operate on fear tactics the same way that the, that the church has operated or... Woo, woo. Okay, that one was real. That was real. I don't know what it is about me. And I'm lucky. I'm Y'all, listen, I'm still holding the phone. You don't even understand. Crawling on me? Whew, Lord. And I love nature. Don't get me wrong. I really do. But I know you can't be smelling all good like I'm smelling. And it's all watery from the rain and things. Oh, a butterfly just flew by right after the spider. But I'm going to go um, check out the... Um, the meaning of spiders because I've had a, quite a few spiders uh, on me in the last couple of days <laughs> being out in nature and um, you know in the Quran there's a chapter called the spider and so uh, sometimes uh, nature is also speaking so back to the to what we're talking about now Monique says, I've been having some real conversations about sex. Don't get me wrong. I just have an approach self-pleasure from a place of power. At, uh, so this is good. Okay, got it. No worries. Um, so, first of all, let's talk about sin. I, 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 I kind of just jumped into the things that we believe is sinful. Y'all didn't put in there some of the things you believe is sinful. Now, it's so interesting to me. When we start to get specific, some of y'all get quiet. I asked you to drop in the comments any of the beliefs that you've had to overcome about sexuality. So do you know that there are women who still believe that the man initiates? So you don't initiate sex if sometimes as a wife. You don't you don't you want you wait on the man to initiate sex um, to, to 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 be affectionate and all of that good stuff. Or you make up stuff when when he he or she is not, okay? Um, but let's talk about sin. Just like all religion, sin is a man-made concept. It's a man-made concept that was created and introduced by the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea is like a, a parliament or a government council that governed in particularly the, the, the church in, uh, uh, at that time. Sexual freedom is not something ancient people ever had an issue, issue with because when you are spiritual, when you are deeply spiritual and you practice ancient ways, you understand nature, but you also understand your nature. And there are consequences. First of all, when women know how to mix herbs, know how to <laughs> know how to sit in their seat of power. Men don't oftentimes cross women who are matriarchal in that way and alchemical in that way. Um, but uh, there's enough history of, of uh, betrayal and, 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 and let's talk about polygamy and, and some of there are people in this group who have tried to practice polygamy or open relationships. They're not open about it because they don't want to be judged by you. But there are people who have, who have been open to open relationships as well because it's funny, um, Pastor Miriam Niles used to always talk about how we'll use the Bible up to a point. But then if you you if you're so Old Testament bound or you're so so heavenly bound, then are you willing to allow your beloved to have um, additional wives and concubines? Because you cannot be around here quoting Old Testament rules and stuff and not look at that that time period and look at that at that situation. Even if we looked in the Bible at, at David and Bathsheba and that whole story. Right. So the, there's a lot of contradictions that we never question or that we ever we we certainly don't sit down and study. And so when we when you how many of you have taken the time to study the council of Nicaea? How many of you have ever asked where did this come from? Why do I believe this? And even when you declare it's not true, 
Um, are you a, this is why you're uncomfortable sometimes with sharing certain things on your Facebook page, liking certain posts. This is why you're uncomfortable with inviting your friends to do some of the work that you're doing because you're still afraid of some type of judgment. But, um, the, it's a lot happening out here in this little nature area that I chose. <laughs> Something just jumped in the water. I mean, a bit. it could have been a fish. But I want to be able to show it to, to you all to bring you all into the experience with me. But <coughs> that being said, <coughs> when we talk about sex as sin, um, when sin was a once a sport, a sport much like darts like throwing darts where you would hit a bullseye or a target when you would throw the 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 dart to tr or the spear to hit the target it would it would land off uh if it landed anywhere other than in the center that was considered to be a sin meaning you miss the mark once again Sin originally was a sport played by all in the village. And when you did not hit the target, I'm throwing my hands, you can't see me. When you did not hit the target, and it, it, if it did not hit, and it was not on there, that dot, it was called sin, meaning you missed the mark. Just like in today's society, there are words, there are phrases, there are actions that become a part of the language. And then once it becomes a part of the language or adopted by a council or made official in any way, it, it, in giving another meaning, that's just like the word nice. Some of you good girls <laughs> are still trying to be nice. But the original meaning and etymology of the word nice is evil. <laughs> Y'all with me? Y'all with me? So a lot of times the things that have handcuffed us, we are not energetically in alignment with what it really means. That's just like the virgin. You know, the idea of virginity. Virginity never originally meant that a woman was sexually pure, meaning she had not had sex before. Virginity meant a whole woman, a woman who is whole. That's just like the word bitch. That's like the word cunt. That is like the word, it's another one. It's another one. It'll come to me. <clears throat> These words have been given negative connotations by men, just as sin. So sin did mean to miss the mark, to not make the mark. But it did not mean disfavor with God. That is something that was adopted into a group of men. Now, if you look at the Council of Nicaea, did you, who's on the council? Do you know that there were sexual perverts on the council who had to work with themselves on their own issues? So they were afraid of their own sexuality and some of them made laws because of their sexuality. So therefore they were trying to so-called be holy and be on this council, be in the in crowd, be, uh, be sanctioned by the church to be bishop, to be this, to be that. So look, look at this. Iyanla teaches this. If you want to know the end, look at the beginning. You cannot have the corruption that we have in these so-called churches and mosques and synagogues where there is pedophilia and there is because anything that you suppress, it will come out in a perverted way. Any suppression is perversion. The, even when we talk about the age that people got married, it was a much younger age, by the way. But now when we start talking about the church and the history with little boys and cutting off their testicles and all these things, what do we do? We just move on like that didn't exist? 
This is a part. And so when you're reading and listening to certain people, you got to understand where their mind is coming from so that now you don't get up on a Sunday or from watching TV, your, your favorite televangelist, uh, 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 no more sheets televangelist telling you about your womanhood. And now you feel like you doing something wrong and your relationship with God is going to be any less pure, divine and favored because of your sexuality. And so there are some women who are born sexual, sex, the, your sex drive, your sensuality, the way you walk, the way you ooze, the way you move. And so if you if you have been condemned. You force, uh, women are oftentimes forced to be bipolar in some ways. I show up here this way. I show up over here that way. I show up over here. So this is how I show up at work. This is how I show up at home. And yes, there is discernment. There is sometimes discernment. Everybody doesn't have to know everything. And you all certainly don't see me out here on my Facebook page uh, popping my ass uh, posing new. There are some sexuality teachers who do that. They talk about um, how much they swallow, who they slept with, the la because they're intentionally trying to disrupt the boundaries and the barriers. That's their assignment, not mine. I don't have that judgment, um, but it's not my assignment. So I do think that there's sometimes in this whole movement of liberation, there are some of us who take it to another extreme to try to prove something or maybe just to get likes and followers and all of that stuff. And so that's why when when we talk about um, open relationships or being polyamorous and stuff like that, um, if there is no integrity when you start, <laughs> there will be no integrity as you grow and into your freedom. And so the women like that are dangerous in many ways, first to themselves and their families, but certainly to other women. And so when we talk about our sexuality and sexual freedom, freedom, we're not talking about being lascivious um, and irresponsible. We are talking about absolutely from a place of healing so that there is not the level of suppression and restriction. So when we talk, when you hear the word sin, I want you to hear this acronym. If you choose, you do not have to take anything that I'm saying as gospel. I encourage everyone to do their own study. Those who work with me, I give resources and much, many more references for you to be able to study. Sometimes people come in the program and they don't study the references. And then what happens is, this is what happened. You don't study the references, you barely do the work in the program, and then life happens and you don't, you're not equipped. So any strong wind can blow and you're right back to feeling, feeling disempowered um, and a whole bunch of other guilt, shame, regret, and that type of thing. Because you haven't done your work to, to actually begin to free your, your mind up mentally and then your body, you know? So... When we talk about sex as sin, I want you to hear this word, self-inflicted nonsense. S, self, I, inflicted, in, nonsense. Because after a while, you don't need anybody to program you or, or to, the program is already inserted from the belief that God is going to condemn you to hell. And, and some of you may believe in heaven and hell, and I'm not trying to take that away from you. Um, so how do I say this? I'm not taking it away from you. However, I come from the, from the, from the, um, the metaphysical studied point of view of it is a condition of the mind, a condition of the mind. Okay. All right. Let me see the comments. I do want to make sure that you get your comments in here today. Yes, we did have a discussion on the word nice. <laughs> um, is this information online? Everything you can imagine, honey, is online. Some things are online. You know, did y'all know there's, you can even go, uh, well, there are some ways to access even some of the books that are in the, um, the um, I want to say the right, the Vatican. 
the, the Vatican has a library of books and stuff as well that that will ne that has never been published. But you really have to be a dedicated um, study. That's why it says the word says study and show thyself approved. But see, listen, check this out. This is real deep. When I learned this, I gotta put my knee up. When I learned this, I was like, damn, that's deep. Study and show your so show thy self approved, right? Just look at how many of us have been conditioned to get certificates and degrees so that others will approve of us. That's the condition of the mind. So now you have people who have degrees, who have certificates, and so they're the ones who are credentialed and that we listen to. But they did not study and show thy self approved, they studied according to the. Look, Go look up the word education. Go look up grammar. <laughs> oh my God. I don't want I don't want to get too deep. Let me keep going. Thank you, Vivian. She said the sexual sins are like watching porn. How many of you are willing to watch porn with your beloved? Even if it doesn't turn you on, if it turns your beloved on and they want to share that moment with you, and how would you know? Is it because you, you don't watch porn because you're insecure? You don't watch porn because you think it's nasty or dirty? Then that's more healing of the, the, the head and the heart, okay? Um, threesomes. Oh, yeah. So how many of you have been in threesomes but never will say or tell? There are groups all over Facebook that are, that talk about their threesomes. Um, I have a dear friend who is looking to be married in a threesome. She she is she and her husband are married, and she wants to include us a, a, a second wife for him and for her because she is sexually fluid. That's you you know we've been taught that marriage has to be one way, and I'm not. And listen, I'm good with with my setup the way it is. Um, I've studied those things as well, but that's not for me because I know me. I know what, what I need. I know what season of my life I'm in, but who, who knows? I don't know. I won't ever say never, but I'm just saying, I don't, I wouldn't condemn someone either. I don't know why people choose what they choose. That's why the word also says the bedroom is undefiled. Okay. Now, let me see what else couples or singles going to strip clubs yes did you all know that there are also i'm not promoting this by the way none of this is an advertisement or a suggestion i'm just telling you that that there are a lot of inhibitions that many of us have not addressed in an educated way we are functioning oftentimes off of fear of hell and damnation or fear that we are going to lose something or we are we've been taught that relationships should be treated just like property so many of you don't really want a husband you want somebody you can own and control and tell what to do and the moment that they because if they came to you and told you a lot of times when 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 spouses are having other extramarital affairs it's because something it, that is not being communicated even if if it's at the childhood level it's um a lot of times men who are sleeping with multiple women multiple women they it's it's not he doesn't know it but a lot of times he has a broken relationship with the womb and therefore he's looking to crawl back inside of the womb now that's not for you to fix it that's not for you to be the one to solve it and be his bomb and gilead that's not that's not what we're saying here but it but we many times we have unhealthy um entanglements not relationships there's a difference between a relationship and an entanglement but you got to join into our uh, into our uh <laughs> our processes to be able to get a little bit more of that okay let me see nina says the pervs will put you in jail to save themselves from so-called sin how about that isn't it ironic that the people who preach sin the preach or 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 are in congress lobbying around these things are oftentimes found to be doing things in bathroom stalls and such 
And now you got bloggers and investigators who are outing people left and right in entertainment and such. Okay, let's keep going. I feel like I'm talking fast. The air is really, really, really thick here. Thank you, Nina. You got it. You got it. Grandma, grandma or grimoire. So many of you who say that you are afraid of, of witchcraft. Do you know that the educational system is the primary primary education is a, is a part of the grimoire the the book of spells. <laughs> so we 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 get indoctrinated it's very layered in design. This country girl Latanya, you just start start talking and it all this stuff just starts coming out but this com this country was built on masonry which means that it was built on secrets and so that it doesn't mean that we don't have to walk around paranoid or angry. You do get angry when you find out that you were trying to be good and you were trying to do right. But for your sexuality to open, your mind has to open. And it's not just about being open-minded. I'm going to try it. I'm going to be a trisexual. Because there are plenty of people who are trisexuals and they still are closed mentally. Just go to any strip club and you'll see people who are trisexual and they are mentally shut down and, 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 and physically as well. They're in survival mode. Um, functioning off fear is real. Functioning off someone else's program. Yes, 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 yes. Is there anything that I did not address? Any questions? So when I talk, I'm going to, I want your questions now. Any questions, observations, comments that I have not, have not shared in here? Um, because when we talk about sexuality, even with toys, you know, there, there's a way to introduce toy play into your bedroom. Um, there are some people who are against toys. And there are some people who are all for toys. I fall somewhere in the middle. I probably am always going to fall somewhere in the middle because I'm a cuspian. <laughs> and I don't do extremes because I've been delivered from extreme religiosity in my own thinking. That's a part of my story, my rebirth story. Um, but I say this for women in your orgasm. However a woman gets an orgasm, as long as you have them. I will be honest with you. When I first got married, when I was 19 years old, I was having really good sex, but I was not, I was not orgasmic in the first few years. I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know either. And so in all thy getting, get inner standing. Don't, you don't have to stand under, but you can get inner standing where you stand on the inside. You stand up and stop laying down for every scare tactic that you've ever been programmed with about things that are good, things that are healthy, things that are sacred. You make it sacred. You elevate the meaning of your sexuality and your sensuality. You, you, your divinity lives within you. And your divinity is not something based off of your behavior. And how many of you know that you've been a good wife, you've been a good mother, and that didn't prevent you from experiencing pain or disappointment? So what? What is, what is the reward that we're looking for for behavior? We have to be able to open ourselves up to ourselves, to our truth. To be able to share our truth with our partner, our desires, and the desires of our heart as well. Janai, you are in the juicy process, so you have these resources to be able to, to, to access. Any more um, inhibitions and such? Any other questions, comments? Talk to me now. Otherwise, I'm about to wrap it up. I'm nice and moist. Y'all like my view? Y'all know in the summertime, I like being outside to share and talk with you, our tribe talks. I'll close with one another one. Multiple partners. Many of us have not been taught how to date. And so we don't know how to date more than one person at a time. Um because we're looking to get married to have legal sex you know 
Yes, we are doing Head Doctor. I will be posting the event. It's going to be um, at the end of June or the, like the after the 14th, the third week, third, third week of June um, where we, we are going to do Head Doctor in addition to some other ones. Remember, you all voted to have a back-to-back edition. And so you will have an opportunity to um, to register online. The links, everything you need will be on for access in there. We're going to have a lot of fun. There's going to be uh, some other things that we're going to do. I have some stuff, um, some opportunities for, for you to be able to... to to play okay i'm gonna have some prizes and some other good things as well so we're gonna have a good time these are all preparation and primers uh on in this wednesday i hope that it, it has been useful to you i hope that those of you who that there's been a prick in your consciousness uh for if you're new to to good girls non goddess um and that love sex and money can be elevated to to purpose pleasure and passion in a sacred way um just like you um you know sex is a fun thing to talk about and i understand that it can be painful for a lot of people as well um you know some of you have a lot of forgiveness work to do around abortions um molestation other sexual trauma and just because a person looks good on the outside, you know, don't assume. And some of you are, have been suffering in silence for far too long. And pleasure is a healer. It can heal you. Not just in a feel-good, temporary kind of way. But pleasure has a way of releasing the strongholds that have been placed on you um, in many ways, in many areas of your life. Even in freeing up your money freeing up your your power to attract and freeing up your voice so you got to be able to use your your voice in sexuality right <laughs> so i love you all there's nothing you can do about it i think that today's may 30th right so this is the last day if you are interested in joining the rites of passage process or i should say you there is a, someone who has a referral please um reach out and this will be the the last time for this round i do have some announcements that i have been teasing you all with um but i am very deliberate in making them a lot of uh changes are going to be taking place with rebirth international so i do encourage you to get in where you fit in and uh let's rock it on out i love you all there's nothing you can do about it i'll see you on the other side ciao Look at that. Look at that out there. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I'm so happy to be in this space, y'all. I just, ooh, I can't tell you. That. There's so much I have to tell y'all. Just can't make this stuff up, this magic up. <laughs>